you can actually get an insane amount of attack. I'm talking like 3,000 attack if you have a deathmatch, and if you have a staff of Homa, you can get up to 4,400 attack. So I've been looking at all of these Wutao leaks, and I found some really interesting things that no one seems to be talking about. And I figured out, in my opinion, the best combo for her. But you can be the judge for yourself after hearing me out. Hutao is planned to be released on the 2nd of March along with Xingqiu and Changyun. I'm convinced because her name card and recipe is already in the game, though that is not confirmed officially and Mihoyo might just pull Hutao Ness again, who knows. So according to the leaks, Hutao is gonna have the highest HP, lowest attack, second highest defense in the game, and bonus crit damage. She has a 6 hit combo that is super fast, takes the same amount of time as Xiangling's 5 hit combo and does a lot more damage, and way faster than Xiao's combo, but it does a little bit less damage than his. Now, her combo is strong, but I think her core playstyle is going to be spamming charged attacks, kinda like a Qing, and here's why. Her normal charged attack looks like Xiangling's, but during her skill, you can animation cancel and spam charge attacks like Keqing. Without Keqing's problem of launching enemies around and having to chase them everywhere because it's going to be a forward dash. On top of that, she has the strongest charge attack out of all sphere users in the game right now. And her first constellation reinforces this idea. And it also unlocks a different playstyle which I will get into in a bit. I think her skill, Guide to Afterlife, ties her whole kit together. But there are some interesting things here that are not obvious, and it doesn't even say here. But during her skill, her charged attack and dash animation changes, and she kinda blinks around, which I think is super cool. The skill costs 30% of her current HP to use, and you can use it twice to reach under 50% HP naturally. For Ascension 4 passive to activate, and you receive a huge pyro damage boost. And because she has high HP and defense, even at lower than 50% HP, she's still gonna be tanky and not get one shot. Something that seems kinda weird to me is that it says here it knocks back enemies, but there's no damage multiplier for this portion of the skill, which I find kinda weird. But having a knockback is super valuable because you can stop, say, Fatue agents from getting sh their shields up and stop enemies from moving. It's just good CC, but it does no damage. Unless there is a hidden multiplier, which we'll, we'll see when she comes out. At the same time, she enters the Paramita Papilio state. Fun fact, Paramita actually means perfect and Papilio means butterfly, so this means perfect butterfly state. Yeah. When she enters this state, she gets a massive attack boost that scales with HP. The more HP you have, the more attack you get, up to 400%. And you can actually get an insane amount of attack. I'm talking like 3000 attack if you have a deathmatch. And if you have a staff of Homa, you can get up to 4400 attack, both at refinement, refinement 1. Her low base attack kind of makes sense now. It's because she's intended to be super strong when she's in her butterfly state. When she's in this state, all of her attacks are infused with pyro, and her charged attacks also apply blood blossom. And what this blood blossom basically is, is a mark. It does damage to the enemy every 4 seconds, and if the longer they have the mark, the more damage they take. And so, the butterfly state lasts for 9 seconds, and the blood blossom lasts for 8 seconds. But it can be refreshed during the butterfly state. So if you apply blood blossom at the end of the 9 seconds, the enemy would still have 8 seconds of blood blossom on them. This is going to be some very nice pyro damage when Fu Tao is off field, which might also be valuable for reactions or combos. I also assume this Blood Blossom is what generates energy for Hu Tao and her team, kinda like Child's Riptide. So the more times you proc it, the more energy you're gonna gain. The Butterfly state ends after 9 seconds or when you switch to another character. And with her Ascension 1 talent, 
which gives 12% crit rate buff to everyone else. She is not only doing massive damage when she's on field, she also does some damage off field and buffs your support after a rotation, which improves overall team damage. She might even be good as a burst support because she has pretty good burst damage, a big crit rate buff to everyone else on her team, and she's also pyro, so she's half of pyro resonance. Okay, now back to her skill. It has a 16 seconds cooldown. The butterfly state lasts for 9 seconds, so that means there's a, there's a 7 second downtime. I see some people saying that she needs a second DPS, but I don't think that's necessary at all. Here's a team that I've put together that I think might be good with Hu Tao, with Ke Qing standing in Hu Tao's place. Hu Tao team video coming soon by the way, subscribe if you want to see that. During her 7 second downtime, you should be switching to your supports, setting up buffs and shields during her downtime for her. And you can see here, using my supports, skills and ult takes up that 7 seconds. You're not gonna need a second DPS. You just need to use your supports. And some people are saying she's going to be a selfish DPS like Razor and Xiao, but I don't think that's the case. Unlike Razor and Xiao, her damage boost is tied to her skill and not her ult, so there's no energy constraint. She probably generates energy for her team with Blood Blossom, and she boosts her overall team damage by giving everyone crit rate. Also, her DPS window is shorter, so she's not wasting team cooldowns as much as the other two carries. I think if you do her team rotations well, she can benefit your team massively while doing a lot of damage. I think she's going to be a really good team player and a very good DPS. Her ult does a really good chunk of damage and heals based on the number of enemies you hit with it. The animation is actually insanely fast, which makes her DPS even better. It also does more damage and more healing when you're at under 50% HP. And by my rough calculations, you can reliably control your HP below 50% between your skill and your ult when there are 1-3 to three enemies. Before we get into what I think is her best combo, if you enjoyed the video so far, or if you learned a thing or two, go hit that like button. Your feedback is always appreciated. And so, what is her best combo? Now, note that this is in theory pre-release. Step 1, activate your skill. Step 2, do 5 to 6 charged attacks and then finish off with your ult. You want to use your skill to get below 50% HP, charge attack while you have the huge attack buff and pyro buff, and then finish off with your ult for some healing. Your charge attacks are gonna do so much damage. And you should ult at the end of the combo, right before the skill ends, but when you still have the attack buff. Not at the start of the rotation like other carries. Because if you accidentally hit too many enemies with your ult, you might heal over 50% HP and lose your pyro buff. And your charge attacks are, are not gonna do as much damage. And if you're not very convinced, I think her constellations actually make this playstyle better. Hu Tao's first constellation conserves stamina for her during her DPS window, which allows more stamina for you to dodge things with. I think this might also open up a new playstyle with Thundering Fury. And if you're wondering how Thundering Fury is gonna work on Hu Tao, there's gonna be a full artifact guide coming soon, so subscribe if you wanna see that. Her second constellation adds some nice damage to your blood blossom, and your ult now applies and refreshes blood blossoms. If you're playing her burst support, this makes your rotation smoother. Though I'm not very sure how good this damage is, I'll let you know once I figured it out when she comes out. Her third constellation gives you some skill levels. This allows you to build less HP to reach the same amount of attack, meaning you can build other things like elemental mastery or even attack which means more damage. I think this is really good here and not her ult because her skill is her core. The fourth constellation gives Hu Tao's teammates a 12% crit rate buff for 15 seconds when something with blood blossom on them dies. This is good when you can kill enemies fast and refresh the buff, but completely useless against single hard to kill enemy. Her fifth constellation gives her a little bit more ult damage 
and a little bit more healing. Nothing really special here. And now onto her last constellation. It really looked really strong at first. When it triggers, Hu Tao cannot die and crits on every hit? That sounds amazing! But then it only lasts for 10 seconds and can only happen every 60 seconds. Uh, because the uptime is so bad, it's a more a safety net rather than a reliable way to boost her damage. And the more you invest into Hu Tao, the more crit stats you build, the less benefit the crit buff actually gives you. I think this constellation is fairly weak and not really worth getting. All of her power is unlocked at C0. And the first three constellations are pretty good, but they're not really necessary. Her last three constellations are just not really good and I don't think they're worth it. Given that each constellation costs a lot of money. Though it's all good! All this info tells us that Hu Tao is going to be super strong at C0 if she's released in this state. I'm thinking she might even be stronger than Deluke and Xiao because of all the buffs that are in her kit. So what do you think about Hu Tao? Do you think she's gonna be strong? Did you learn something new? Leave a comment below, I'll reply. That's it. Oh yeah. Also, massive thanks to my Discord community. They brought me all of the leaks. Okay, bye.